Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make cacio e pepe properly for a crowd using a trick that I learned in restaurants that Italians are gonna hate. But before I show you how to make a big portion of this dish, I think it's a good idea to show you the more traditional one pan, one portion method for your reference. That way, if it's just you and you need like a late night snack, you're covered. The first move is to fill a large shallow pan with about two liters of water and then drop it onto the stove to bring it up to a boil. Once that water's at a full boil, I'm gonna add in two very generous pinches of salt and then I'll drop in 115 grams of dried spaghetti. From there, I'm gonna drop a 10 inch saute pan on the other side of my stove and then heat it up over medium high heat and then add in 30 grams of extra virgin olive oil and then two to three grams of coarsely ground black pepper. I'll give that a shake to get things combined and then I'll fry the pepper in the oil for 30 seconds or so or until you can just start to smell a little bit of toast from the pepper. Giving it a quick fry like this really opens up its flavor and transfers all of that pepperiness over to the oil. Once that pepper is just starting to take on some color like this, I'm going to turn off my burner and scoot this pan to the back of the stove to let it cool down. Five or six minutes later, when I check back on my spaghetti, it should be just about hitting al dente, nine minutes or so in total. Then, using tongs, I'm going to transfer this pasta over to my saute pan. This method of not really draining the pasta is going to get a bunch of extra pasta water in that pan, and that starch is really going to help hold together this sauce. I'll scoop in about another two ounces or 60 grams of that pasta water and now off heat in goes the first half of 30 grams of cold butter and I'll start to swirl that in. Making an emulsified pan sauce for pasta always is going to involve a lot of movement like this. The main reason being is that we want the butter to be incorporated into the water as soon as it melts. If we just let the butter fully melt and then start it in we would have grease, basically. After a few tosses, that butter is emulsified, and then I'll add in 15 more grams for 30 grams in total. Same move as before here too. Swirl, swirl, toss, toss, and after about 20 more seconds of flipping this about, the butter is now fully mounted into the water, and we've got a nice, opaque, unbroken butter sauce. But I still have to get cheese in here, and this is looking a little bit tight, so I'm going to add another 30 grams, or about an ounce of pasta water. I'll toss that in, and take a look. Before we add the cheese, it should be loose, but still emulsified and opaque like this. Now, in goes 30 grams of Pecorino Romano cheese. If you haven't had it, Pecorino Romano is a strongly flavored, piquant, salty sheep's milk cheese from Italy, specifically from Sardinia. To get it into a state that is more easily melted into a pasta sauce, I opted to grate it on my microplane. For cheeses with a really low moisture content like this one, I find that the smaller the grind, the better when it comes to melting. Now, I'm going to toss that Pecorino to combine with the pasta and the sauce, and at a certain point, it starts to melt and get a little bit thicker, so I'll switch over to tongs to make more movement happen. From there, it's a shake and a stir and a shake and a toss to get the cheese evenly distributed throughout the pasta within the butter sauce. And at this point, the cheese is tightening the sauce. So I'm gonna add another splash of pasta water and toss that in. Now, look at the sauce. It looks creamy, but see those white spots in there? That's unmelted cheese. This pan was just a little bit too cool. So I'm gonna flick the burner onto its lowest setting so that I can very, very gently melt the remaining pecorino. That should only take about 15 seconds or so. A little bit of heat here goes a very long way, so be careful. Cut to a pan that was way too hot. As you can see, the cheese seized up and stuck to the bottom of the pan, and the result is a broken, oily mess that is not cacio e pepe, also known as a huge bummer. Back at the stove, once the pecorino has been very gently melted in, it should be smooth and creamy and just a touch saucier than you'd think. Now, to plate it up, I'll grab a shallow bowl and my tongs and then swirl the pasta into a little pretty nest of spaghetti around the tongs, and then I'll gently twirl it into the bowl. To finish, I'm going to hit it with more cheese, this time grated aged Parmesan because I really like the roundness of a crumbly grated parm here. And then lastly, of course, I'm gonna hit this with a ton of fresh cracked black pepper. As you can see, this is a super simple dish that needs to be perfectly in balance for it to be right. Olive oil, black pepper, rich butter, and salty cheese all come together to make something that is really traditional and delicious, but it's something that takes quite a bit of attention to detail to get right and will take some practice. Mm. That tastes as good as it looks. It's just cheese, oil, and butter. And if it's just you making one for yourself, I think you could deal with the fussiness and get this right. But if you're making it for a crowd, nah. Like, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. So there's an easier way. Let me show you how to do it. For that, I'm gonna grab a large, deep pot filled with about four quarts of water. While that comes up to a boil, I'm gonna grab a high-sided container and my immersion blender. Into that container, I'm gonna add 100 grams of water, and then I'll grab the secret ingredient for this dish, Xanthan gum. If you haven't heard of it, xanthan gum is a modified food starch that shows up in all kinds of different foods. And in my opinion, it's totally benign. It's nothing to be worried about. And it's a useful tool in certain contexts. Its main use is as an emulsifier or a stabilizer. And that's perfect for us when trying to keep oil, butter, and cheese stuck together. Now I'm gonna scoop off a quarter of a quarter of a quarter of a teaspoon. 
a very little bit basically goes a very long way with this stuff so be careful now with the immersion blender spinning i'm going to sprinkle in the xanthan this stuff can be a little bit hard to hydrate and it might clump up if you don't add it while the water is still spinning and there we go a little bit of xanthan gum slurry it should feel just a little bit slimy on the tips of your fingers almost like the inside of an okra but less slimy than that even cut to a slurry of xanthan gum that has a triple of what we just added as you can see it is way too viscous and it has a super weird texture so only use the amount that i showed you okay let's make this thing now my water's up to a ripping boil so i'm gonna add three strong grips of salt because pasta water should be almost like ocean water in terms of salinity and then in goes one pound or 450 grams of pepe regate these are basically just giant grown-up macaronis and i really like how they hold on to this sauce it's probably my preferred party noodle in general and also in my opinion this style of pasta is much easier to serve family style than spaghetti now i'll stir these noodles to make sure they're not sticking to the bottom of the pot and then i'll let this pasta cook for about 10 minutes while i wait let me thank the sponsor of this video Babbel. Babbel is an online language learning platform designed by linguistics experts and taught to you directly by native speakers. The native speaking part is huge because most language apps use AI or robots and you never really learn the language as it's really spoken. I started using Babbel a few months ago to go deeper into Spanish because I'm actually planning a trip to the Rioja in Spain later this year. To help get ready for that trip, I've been using courses like Cafe en España in the Discover Culture section of the website. That one's all about ordering coffee in Spain. El café cortado. El café cortado. El café con hielo. El café con hielo. Also, if online courses aren't your thing, Babbel also has podcasts, games, videos, or even live streaming classes with live language teachers. And as a companion, Babbel has a super powerful app that's perfect to have in your pocket when you're actually doing your traveling so that you can use it as a reference or try to pick up a few vocabulary words while you're on the go. So to try Babbel and to start 2022 by finally learning that language that you got a B minus in in high school, click the link in my description and get 65% off your subscription. 65% is a lot of percent. Gracias, Babbel. Por Patrocinar este video. Now, five minutes later, or when the pasta is about halfway cooked, I'll preheat a 10 inch saute pan over medium high heat. And once that's heated, in goes 120 grams of extra virgin olive oil and eight to 10 grams of coarsely ground black pepper. I'll give that a shake just like I did before and let this pepper fry and bloom in the oil for about 30 seconds to a minute. I'd also like to mention that eight to 10 grams of ground pepper is actually like a lot to get out of a pepper mill. So for the pepper that is actually in this sauce, I use a pre-ground product. Since we're gonna be frying this pepper in oil, it's a essential pepperiness is going to be reawakened and it's going to flavor that oil. Plus, I'm going to be finishing the dish with fresh cracked black pepper. So I kind of get two types of flavor, one fried and one fresh. Once the pepper is toasty and starting to take on a touch of color like this, I'll add in all 100 grams of the xanthan gum slurry that I just made and whisk to combine. Behind that in goes the first half of 120 grams of chilled butter or 60 grams. And then I'll whisk that to combine, stirring constantly to get that butter emulsified in with the water. Once that butter is all whisked in, I'll add in another 60 grams grams of butter and whisk that in as well. Heat wise, I'm rolling this over medium low heat because I don't want to evaporate too much water here. If we over reduce this, then the ratio of xanthan gum would change and it would be more concentrated and it would start to get weirdly thick. So just keep that in mind. After that's all whisked up, you can see that the butter and the oil are fully emulsified into the water. And I know that because it's opaque and I don't see any streaks of melted fat in there sitting on top. I'll leave that on low heat and check back on the pasta. Over here, it's been about 10 minutes. So now I'm gonna give one of these noodles a quick taste for doneness. They're soft, but not too soft. I think some people call that el dente. That tastes great. Now, before I drain this, I'm gonna pull out six ounces of my pasta water or roughly 150 grams. From there, I'm gonna grab my pot, drain off the pasta water, and then flip the noodles back into the Dutch oven. Back at the stove, everything is off heat and now I'm gonna pour my butter sauce over the noodles. I'll scrape that down and then add in all 150 grams of my reserved pasta water. From there, I'll give everything a lively stir both to get things combined and to loosen up some more starch from the pasta itself. After maybe a minute of stirring, I'm gonna grab my pecorino and add that in. 120 grams of pecorino in total. And again, this was grated on my microplane. Spoon goes in and I'm gonna start to get that melted into the sauce. And now depending on how hot your pot is from the boiling period, just like before, actually might be worth adding a little bit of low heat underneath the pot to facilitate that last little bit of melt. Keep an eye on it though if you do. The last thing in is another 60 grams of cheese. This time though, it's grated Parmigiano Reggiano, the real deal. This is not traditional for straight up cacio e pepe, but this is the B-man's party version of this dish. And I think the round nutty softness of parm here makes this version super comforting and crowd pleasing. Off heat, I'll stir that Parmesan in to melt alongside the pecorino. And once things are looking creamy and saucy like 
like this, I'm going to take it off the stove so that we can take a closer look. As you can see, every noodle is generously coated and things are looking silky. That's called an emulsion, you guys. Of course, before I call this done though, I'm going to give it a quick taste for seasoning. I'll give it a touch more salt and then a touch more cheese, stir that in, and then I'll taste again to confirm what we're all thinking. Yes, that tastes quite sick. Personally, I'm really excited for the next time I have people over because I'm definitely going to be making family style cacio e pepe. This version is creamy, but not heavy. It's sharp, but well balanced. And dare I say, pretty sophisticated for something that's really easy to make. I hope you try it soon. Let's eat this thing.